You talked about the excitement that you have for this job, the fact that it's a dream job for you. Being a general manager in New York City, being a general manager of the New York Mets, it, it's a daunting job for somebody for their first general manager's job. How much will you take from your jobs in places like Boston and with the Cubs that have a similar fan base when it comes to the rabid fan base and the expectations there? How much will you lean on what you've done and the success that you've had in those jobs? Yeah, I mean, a lot. You know, I've, I've learned from some great people there. I've seen how you know, people like Theo Epstein, Ben Charrington, um, you know, Jed Hoyer have, have handled those situations. And, um, you know, I think it's great. I, I, to having a, having a big, energized, um, you know, uh, passionate fan base is, is awesome. You know, I think it's, it's what we all work for. It's, it's what it should be. Um, you know, having the the pressure to to you know to perform each night in, in, in a big market is great, and and not, not only those guys, but just you know being able to work with and for you know someone like Sandy, I'm um, I'm gonna certainly lean on him a lot, you know, and uh, and I'm excited for that, and that was a really appealing part of this opportunity to me was getting the chance to to work and for with and for him. Uh, Jared, this is Andy Martino. Uh, Sandy used the word empathy that you used today, and he's used it specifically to talk about uh, bridging the gap between uh, scouting and analytics, which may be a little bit of an oversimplification, but remains kind of persistent in the game. How do you plan to build that culture, and what have your experiences already been in building that culture where those two sides that can still regard each other with some mutual distrust uh, can work fully together? Yeah, you know, I think they, they, they have to work together, and they will. Um, you know, I think part of that is how it's approached. Neither, neither side should be polarizing. You know, there has to be constant communication, education on both sides. You know, it goes both ways. Um, educating the analysts and the R&D group on, on how scouts see the game and how some coaches might see the game. Um, and uh, educating the scouts um, and the coaches and how, how some of the analysts see the game. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about um, evaluating and acquiring the right players um, it's all about the right way to teach and, and coach players. And, uh, you know, players, in my experience, they want this information. They want challenge. They want to be coached. They want, they want new information. You know, I, I really believe that analytics, um, because it touches every part of a baseball operation, um, is much more of a, of a bridge builder um, than, than anything else. As long as it's done the right way, you know, it's, it's really something that should bring the whole organization together because it touches everything. And that's, that's certainly my plan, um, you know, is, is making sure that it's ingratiated that way. And it's always going to be at the forefront, um, you know, as well as, you know, the traditional communication and, um, you know, which is incredibly important as well. Hey, Jared, Steve Gelbs again here. You, um, you know, you speak about bringing in the right players into the organization. And, and I know you're regarded in the industry as a, a really keen talent evaluator. Um, you're also regarded as someone who can, can find some diamonds in the rough. And you spoke about a couple of those players during your press conference. Is there any one particular move that you either had a lot of input in or, or made a recommendation on a certain player that you're most proud of in your career? And, and why would that one be? You know, I think um, not to mention any of the other ones that I mentioned. I really think that the two that stand out in Arizona were the Cattell Marte um, when we acquired him as, as kind of the second player in the deal. Um, when we first got there, um, Taiwan Walker came back, Cattell Marte came back. Um, you know, Cattell has turned into a to a you know superstar, uh, second base, center field shortstop for the Diamondbacks. And then one that stands out to me too that I learned so much from was J.D. Martinez uh, in the 2017 season, our first year in Arizona. We're able to acquire JD at the deadline, and not only um, did JD perform really well for us, but just seeing how JD shift the culture in our clubhouse, um, you know, and, and challenged his teammates, taught his teammates, and really he really raised the bar um, in our clubhouse from a day-to-day -day standpoint. So I always I always look back at that one. Not only was it was it a, um, a one that I'm excited about because of how well JD played, but from a learning experience, just seeing how one player like that can come in and impact the culture um, is something that I'll always carry with me and I'll be searching for. Hey, Jared, it's Jim Duquette. Uh, welcome to New York. Uh, I spoke Thank to you. your former man, your former manager now, Tori Lovello today, earlier today uh, with the Diamondbacks. He said that, you know, two of your greatest traits, you're listening, but you've talked about the ability to listen, but also to support the manager in any way uh, he needed. How specifically did you, you said you were around the major league club more this year. How specifically did you help with that? And then what uh, during that will help you with your relationship with Luis Rojas? 
Yeah, I mean, so that we're all in this together. You know, it's it's a long season every year. There's so many ups and downs. I feel like, you know, the front office, not not just the GM, like the the entire front office should, and the coaching staff needs to constantly be, you know, in communication, um, on the same page. We're we're all in there to help help each other. Um, you know, I think there's sometimes the conversations are are critical. Sometimes they're more fun, um, depending on the situation. But you know, I think we all have so much to learn from each other. So. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to start working with Louie and his staff. You know, I, I can't wait to hear more about the culture that he's already started to create and how we can even continue to uh, to give them more support and, uh, and and push that forward in the future. Jared, it's Gary again. Let, let's finish on this. You talked about the fact that you want to turn the Mets into a team that's difficult to play against. What's the, the number one thing that goes into that in your mind? I think there's two things in it because one's, one's with the hitting and one's with the pitching. I think from a hitting standpoint, I think it's a lineup that, that's deep, that has versatility, and that grinds at bats. It's really tough for opposing pitchers to come in there and match up against and face. Um, I think from a pitching standpoint, it's really, it's really almost the inverse. It's pitchers that, that command the strike zone, um, that, that create uncomfortable at bats for opposing hitters, and that can execute a really strong game plan. You know, so you can kind of diversify the way that maybe you look against a team if you play them more than once. So I think those are the two areas and two things that, that uh, kind of stand out the most to me.